everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to What Will This Be. Today we're going to spend some time together doing another beautiful, colorful and very approachable practice. Uh, this is going to be a pattern inspired by nature, but an abstract uh, pattern. Uh, we are going to kind of learn how to use uh, lines, mostly curved lines, to create a nice optical illusion of our space, to give our piece movement and rhythm. We're gonna also learn how to fill specific space by tracing petals, because the design and the pattern will include the flowers, uh, just to size the, petal, the petals according to the space that we have available. So adapting our shape to the space, which is extremely good skills, is a work about the element of space, and at the end, you should have a beautiful, very cohesive design with this idea of kind of movement and tension. For today's practice, you need your mix and media paper or your mix and media journal. I'm going to use my journal. Remember, if you use a loose piece of paper, complete what you do. Don't do it too big so you won't feel overwhelmed and you feel that you're going to be able to complete the practice and then save it together with all the other practices that hopefully you did with me. Or if you're new to this channel, hopefully you will do with me. And uh, uh, I would say mix and media paper, a regular tip, uh, black uh, Sharpie or any brand that you have available, a thinner, so fine tip Sharpie or any brand that you have available, and then colored markers. I will personally use alcohol markers. If you don't have them available today, you can do this practice even with Scholastic Crayola markers. So, you know, it is the process and the steps that are, I want you to focus on more than on the final product and the fanciness of our supplies. I will include the information of the materials that I personally use with the link for you to go and buy. It's not a paid partnership, it's just like what I'm using and I'm gonna share it with you. So in case you feel that you wanna buy them, and provided the same supplies for yourself because you decided to embrace the, this journey with me and have you, you know, practice art weekly. It's definitely something that I encourage you to do. So I'm going to give you the information. So I'm going to switch the camera and we can practice together and see what happens. This is my journal. I hope you're ready with your paper. We're going to kind of, I like to reframe it a little bit and maybe we can do it with a pencil because just in case something happens, we will be able to make corrections once we outline it with the marker so we can erase. Once we set a black Sharpie on the paper, we know that that is not really a way to change anything. Now we are going to kind of use this corner and very slowly we are going to do a nice, beautiful curved line all the way until the other corner. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. So we try our best to make them, oops, sorry, as similar as possible, but if they're not perfectly, you know, geometrically perfect, it's totally fine. We're gonna do the same also from the other corner. So we're gonna have a one curved line going up, intersecting the other ones, like a big eyes that we are tracing. And the other one on the other side, Go slow if you need to break the movement in more segmented line. We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna add the one more going down, filling up the space. I'm gonna do one more over here, and we're gonna do the same on the other two sides. So, one. And then slowly two. So curved, 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 double and double. Okay. Now, if you want, you can directly go with the Sharpie. So you define those lines and you just go very slowly over. If you by accident don't go exactly over your pencil line or if you want to modify, remember that then you use an eraser to erase the lines with the pencil so you're not gonna see them at all. Just we go slow. Steady. And 
and carefully. This is an extremely good exercise for our fine motor skills. We're gonna better the quality of our lines. And once again, if something happens and your lines are not uh, uh, perfectly geometric or perfectly uh, symmetric, it's not important. I want you to try this exercise freehand. So do not use any tools except for your hands and the pencil. And one last. I like it already. Now we're gonna have fun coloring the uh, background before going with the fine black markers. And I invite you to do you and really use a, a warm palette or a cold palette or any palette that you want, a mix of both. I suggest you personally for this specific practice to use one side of the color wheel. So I'm setting my marker so I have them all ready and I'm gonna start with yellow and I'm gonna color the surface of the first central spot. Color using a short strokes, or if you prefer, you can use the long strokes. Just remember to fill all the gaps. I know this noise is not the best one ever. I wanna probably use the back side of my markers. What I liked about those uh, alcohol markers that they are dual tip, uh, so they give us the opportunity in case we need to fill bigger space, we can use the bigger tip, so we say sometimes and some mental sanity. <laughs> And I will do a sort of a symmetric uh, pattern with colors. But as I always encourage you, you find your own solution. So if you want to try something different, go for something different. If today you feel that you want to use a, a, a cold color palette, use a cold color palette. Take your time to color. You can go slower, you can go faster. You, I want you to be able to do you. Let me see if this one should be a different type of yellow. We're gonna try it immediately, perfect. I'm taking uh, a darker yellow. Now, if you do not have uh, so many colors available, so, so you don't have uh, many variation of the same colors, you can always overlap your markers. You just need to be careful. And if you're using like a, a mix and media paper, the mix and media paper should hold the markers very, very well. If you're using a thinner type of paper, be aware that if you scrub too hard or if you go over and over the same spot, unfortunately, the markers can also uh, ruin the paper or break the paper. So just go very gently if you're overlapping the markers. For example, if you want this type of uh, very dark yellow or light orange, but you don't have it, you can mix uh, the yellow on top of the regular orange and you're gonna have a little variation that will give you uh, more freedom in uh, completing this uh, pattern because you will have a more shade and tint and tone available. Now I'm gonna go with this sort of a golden colors, actually almost brown, very light, I would say very intense honey color. I'm gonna have some fun. Now the coloring part is very relaxing. The only focus that you have to keep is on your hands on the paper, so you can feel exactly the space that you want, so you have to be intentional and make sure that you don't leave any gaps so the colors uh, will look very nice and saturated so intense but you can actually relax 
enjoy these activities take the time that you take for yourself make sure that you are in a comfortable position that you breathe in and out and you're taking care of your well-being now we're going to switch to orange this is the like medium orange i think that i will do it here and here very very nice and bright today i really uh, feel energized and so i decided to go for a very exciting warm palette and I want to feel energized, so I want to feel a lot of energy when I look into this piece today. But if today your feelings are different and you need it to actually feel calm while you practice and also after, so when you look at this piece, you can go with a nice cool palette. So you're going to use the analogous colors on the cold side of the color wheel. Let's see if I'm going to use, probably, let's see this other orange, hmm, lighter. We're going to put it in here. And very warm. And in this one, I'm going to do also here, here, and here. So after we trace a pattern, any type of pattern with pencils and then markers and whatever, we can enhance and support this pattern by using colors and alternating them in a regular way. So we create also a pattern with colors. So we are doing now a pattern into a pattern and then we're gonna do inside another pattern. Look at that. Patterns, patterns, patterns. Such a beneficial practices for us. Now it's time to switch to the red. And I think that probably the central one will be my red. But before making that decision, actually, I wanna try this magenta first. And I'm going to do the magenta over here. It looks very similar to this one, but when it dries, it will show me the difference. Definitely hotter, very hot color. Take your time to make decisions about the colors that you want to use. You don't have to be fluent, you know, it doesn't have to come uh, immediately. Sometimes it happens, sometimes you need to take a little time. You can kind of put them here, compare, see, make your decision. I try to be as quick as possible so the video is not too long, but please, 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 absolutely. Uh, do you know take time and care in choosing these colors so i think that i'm gonna use this one well, let me see if i should go with this one i'm gonna see probably i'm gonna use this like a more of a violet because this one carries more red and i want something to break down now i'm gonna have a little overlapping here we're gonna see a little spot but at the end with the design that we're gonna do inside this space i will really i won't see anything and sometimes as i say it is important to do kind of a a little experiment right because we are not sure and these of course we want to have a nice colorful design at the end of this practice but remember that the most important thing about these practices is the process the fact that we are here exercising together 
fine motor skills, coloring skills, tracing lines, creating optical illusion through patterns and lines, and just dedicate some time to ourselves so we can really distress and refocus and relocate the attention on ourselves. Now for this one, I will use instead the magenta that I took at the beginning, like here, not at the beginning, but before this. Now I have a kind of a big decision to make because if I do it red, I think it's going to be too similar to this very, very dark orange. And I don't want it to be because this is going to be the main bigger um, space of this design. So I want to make sure that it pops. I could repeat the yellow, for example. Or this golden yellow. Or I could use a very dark and intense red, maybe overlapping it too. Let me see if we have something that is more of a rose red. Let's see how this will look. And let me see how the red red will look. Hmm. I think I will go with this one and maybe overlap with another color. We'll leave it like that and kind of uh, yeah I think that there is enough difference between these two this one is definitely more intense brighter and hotter so it's perfect for the main central I really like to use this technique of uh, tracing like stripes with the color one next to each other just very relaxing I love the little pattern that comes from the markers set to this design and it's already so pretty the way it is right so we can go move uh, the colorful marker away and now if you don't feel that you want to do it directly with the sharpie you can use the pencil on top because it's still paper and you will be able to see i want you to look carefully what i do we're gonna fill those spaces with flowers okay so we want to adapt the shape of the flower to the shape that has been given to us from the design so we're gonna always put the circle of the flower in the center let me see if you can see well and then we are going to do daisy sort of uh, petals, but look what I do. I go all the way up to the edge of the shape and back down to the flower, all the way up and down, all the way up and down, all the way up and down. Sometimes we will have to square the edge of the petal or give it like a little different shapes just because we are really going around the edge of the space that we have to feel. We're gonna do the same over here, for example. The circle will be a little smaller because we have a smaller space. And then look what I do. This first petal will be very long, right? Then this one will be completely different and short because we are adapting it to the edge of these irregular geometric shapes. Now we go in here. Circle and then petals, 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 like that. Make sure that you touch the edge of the shape. So you touch the black edges. 
and you shape the petal as the edges adjust to themselves. Let's do it on the yellow. This one is going to be a little tricky, very, very elongated petals that we have to, and very short on the side, right? We do the same over here. Take your time. If you need to go slow, you go slow. We're gonna do this. Extremely long and then back to be squared and short. Sometimes it's gonna be very difficult to feel exactly the shape, but we do it as much as possible. Let's go over here. We're gonna do a little bigger circles and bigger petals because of course the space that we have to fill, it's bigger. Take your time, don't rush these steps. There is not a specific number of petals that I'm doing. I kind of go with the flow. So I look at the space that I have available and I trace petals that fulfill this space. Some of them smaller, some of them bigger. I'm not really concerned, concerned at all about the specific uh, number of petals. So don't be, just focus on the, your hand moving on the paper and creating these petals that fulfill this space. We're gonna go it here. And little by little, we are gonna do our job very patiently because art requires time and patient, patience, sorry, and we are going to complete our design then now you already start to see the direction that is taking right the fact that we are creating an optical illusion attention on the paper just by using lines that are helping us to trace and create shapes sort of geometric shapes as the foundation and then the flowers or organic shapes That they get shaped shaped in a way that will enhance and support the movement and the illusion of this tension in this space. Here, mm -hmm. it becomes really challenging because space is very tiny. Nevertheless, we try our best and we fill the space with this weird, tiny, elongated, stretched out flowers. I will probably leave this one, two, and three, four as a sort of a frame because the space is really too tiny and it doesn't allow us to really uh, fulfill it uh, properly. So with my fine Sharpie, now we're gonna go and we are going to do the outline of these petals.
or if you want to do it uh, maybe a little faster what we can do we can switch i'm going to show you first this method okay that you do first the outlines with the extra fine sharpie and we're going to do a little pattern inside the petals very very simple nothing fancy line and dot 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 okay then we can also create a little bin shapes inside each circle if you want or you can use the thick sharpie and color directly the background so the negative space the negative space I did a nice practice many, many, many months ago about positive and negative space. So the positive uh, space is the images itself. So the negative space is the space that is around it, its background, right? And playing around with coloring the, you know, um, positive and negative space, so we can create a beautiful illusion and beautiful patterns. Now, if you wanna do faster, you can use your thick Sharpie to just go directly, see, around the petals. <laughs> and if something like that happen, you just reshape it basically. And so by coloring the negative, it will define the positive, but then you have to go and do the pattern inside the petal. So I'm gonna do the next one directly with this thick Sharpie first. And I'm gonna color the center of all the flowers entirely with black, except the little bean shape that we created. So if you want, you can do like that. We're gonna use the extra fine to do the bean shape, the pattern inside each petal, and then we're gonna switch it to the thick, thicker Sharpie to color around, okay? So let's go. Line and dot, line and dot, line and dot, line and dot, line and dot. Of course, in some tiny space spaces, if you feel that you want to use the thin Sharpie to fulfill the negative space around the petals, do so, so you don't risk to go accidentally maybe inside the design. Line and dot, line and dot, line and dot. This is nice relaxing if you feel that you need to take a break take a break remember that you can also divide this activity in two you don't have to do it all in once maybe in one you design the background and all the coloring and the uh, tracing of the flowers and on in a second uh, session you can do these uh, patterns and negative space feeling so, you know your schedule, you know also your endurance, which means that your ability to practice something for an extended amount of time and to stay connected and focused for an extended amount of time. It is a, an extremely good exercise for our really social emotional skills and our mental focus skill that in such a fast paced society, we are constantly overstimulated, so we are risking to lose the ability to stay focused and entertained for a longer amount of time before switching and switching and switching, which is not good. We should commit, commit, and commit. 
But if you feel the frustration, you feel that you're not doing it more with the attention and the care that you did it at the beginning, I, well, this one, they're going to be all black because they're very, very tiny, these flowers. So I'm not going to do the bean shape inside the circle. In this one, I will try. As I was saying, if you feel that you're not paying attention uh, to the quality of your lines, to the quality of your colorings, and you're not enjoying it anymore, in that case, of course, I suggest you to take a break and maybe resume the activity in another moment or in another day. What I really encourage you to do it always, is always finish what you start. It's so important. If you're doing these practices with your kids, uh, grandkids, uh, your students, because maybe you're using my video in a classroom, or if you're doing it uh, as a homeschooling parent, I highly encourage you to really finish and teach your kids and your students to finish for what we start. So now we're gonna keep fulfilling the uh, negative. I have a variety of black markers. So when I feel that the space is pretty big enough for me to work with the regular tip Sharpie, I'm gonna do so. When I feel that the space is very thin and I don't wanna mess it up, I will switch and I will go back to my uh, thinner marker. So you need to do you also because maybe the dimension of your paper is different than mine. Your design is smaller or maybe it's bigger, right? So you might face slightly different challenges that I am facing of this design. And in any case, at the end, I will go on and fulfill the space in the petals. Now, I wanted to show you all the steps uh, from pencil first and then markers. Then, when you become a little more advanced and more familiar with this type of practice and pattern, you will be able to do directly with the marker, so you don't have to do the steps with the pencil, which is going to save you some work and time. But I wanted to really show you how like the activity will go if you do all the steps and you need to use the pencil, right? So I'm here in the struggle with you. I didn't use any shortcut. I did it. Now, little by little, in fulfilling the negative space, since it's black next to black lines, we're gonna lose the lines that we trace at the beginning, but they are still part of the foundation, right? It's like in buildings, when they do the foundations, you see them at the moment that they are building them, but then the foundation get included, right? In the building itself, we don't see them anymore. That doesn't mean that they are not there, and that doesn't mean that they are not important, because without those foundation, we could not build the building. So without the tracing the diagonal, like the curved line and setting the foundation of this design, we would not be able to have the design at all. So nothing is useless and nothing is wasted. If you're wondering about Oh, but we traced the line and now we are losing them. Well, but we needed them, right? In order to be able to create those spaces with this in illusion of tension and to fulfill those spaces with um, flowers. black will also give you the opportunity to reshape a little bit some of the petals if you wish to do so or if you do so by accident yeah. 
And I know that for me, this is the most challenging part. It's just because it gets a little tedious, like <laughs> a little annoying. You need to stay focused and fill these tiny spaces with the black. So that it's like you need to force your hands and your skill to stay really focused and committed. And it's a challenge, but I am facing it. I'm embracing it and I'm going to finish what I started because it's going to be a beautiful, gorgeous design. And then I, feel, I really, I will feel uh, rewarded and happy and proud. One of the reasons because I do not uh, speed up my video and I do not show you the design uh, like a uh, speeding up uh, two three times is because I don't think that that is a good support for you if you want to understand and embark a journey to make space for art in your life uh, and really do rewarding and fulfilling and useful and important practices art take time, coloring take times, regardless of your skill level. If you are a little more advanced, you could be a little faster. As I say, you can start to skip some steps such as pencil and you can go directly with the markers, but still you have to do the job, right? And I don't think that is like a, a useful to show you um, accelerated video because then uh, you will feel so frustrated when you started to do it to do an activity and you will see that actually takes uh, three times if not more the time that was shown on the video and you will tend to abandon it which instead I want you to do the opposite I want you to embrace it so this is why I say adapt it at your own skill like at your own schedule and your own need you don't have to do it in one time, but I want you to understand how much time it takes. And uh, I really want you to commit and finish the practice. So you will really understand what you have been doing. You won't feel that you have been wasting your time. You really build your own personal connection and also reflections, right? Doing an activity and taking the time to do it. That could be 30 minutes to 45 minutes, an hour or so. You will actually be able to connect with the activity and kind of uh, uh, think of what you're doing, uh, take mental notes. Uh, it's like, I like this, I think it's going well, or I think it's not going as I expected, but I want to finish it and see at the end. The next time I'm going to do something different, I'm going to make sure that I do this and that. So all this type of personal reflection and connection with art comes through the time that we spend and we dedicate to art. So when I see there are amazing, uh, talented artists that show amazing videos, which, you know, capture my attention, but then they do it uh, so, they speed it up so much. And I say, oh my goodness. So then people will think that you just need the 10, 15 minutes to create a gorgeous masterpiece, which is not. It's not the, the reality. It's not what happens in the studio time. So I just want to be like a, as honest as possible. And I want to give you the opportunity to honestly approach art and be flexible and use those video as you want them. So instead to give you the illusion, oh, this practice will take uh, 30 minutes. Instead, it takes an hour and 15. I will give you the real things, but then I will say, since you know that this practice is going to take this time, maybe today you're going to do some part of it. And then another day you will do other part of it and another day. And if you take a whole week to finish it, it's totally fine because, not, you know, you should not rush in something that you're doing 
for your own choice and for your own personal benefit. We're almost there, my friend. We have a one last flower to fulfill the negative space around it. And then one more very quick things to do because with the extra fine Sharpie, we have to go in the center of the flower to kind of complete, go over the lines that we trace for our petals with the pencil. So everything will be then traced with black markers and would be nice and cohesive. I think that we did it all. I really love it. It's really, really pretty. So with this extra fine sharp, you see when the when the petals meet each other, we are going to go around. We did it already on the first. Don't skip this. And then actually we're gonna color the black inside. I know. The need to finish is real, but we stay committed and focused. Make sure that you are having a good posture, you're comfortable, you're breathing deeply. You go on the line a couple of times to make it a little thicker. So we are really taking care of all the details. We are not leaving anything, you know, untouched or undone. Feel this. I feel congested and it's June 29th. How can someone be congested at June on June 29th? It's a mystery to me, but anyway, I'm gonna actually kind of reinforce those lines and make them a little thicker. This is our central flower, so. We're gonna make sure that it's nice. Pretty. Switch to this. Let's make sure that we did all of them. Oh, no, let me finish this one. Let me finish one side because then I, I am afraid that I might forget. So let's complete also this. Now you can really see how pretty, right? And this tension that is coming up, oh my, I really love it. Uh, I want to tell you that this bright, bright palette that I chose is kind of a, I don't want to say hurting my eyes, but you know, it's definitely impacting them. It's really, really bright. Maybe another time I will choose a, a delicate palette or a cold uh, palette, but honestly, my goodness, I love it. It's so very like a, summary and cheerful and once again it's like a proof that with very simple gesture and very simple element such as lines and colors we can create other elements such as the shapes and the space 
and we can really create optical illusion, visual interest, and we can create a beautiful, colorful piece with simple element, which once again, art never disappoint us and always teach us more than what is on paper. And really in life, very simple things that can have a huge positive impact on us and on the community around us. So I always, mostly when I'm in school with my students, I like to stretch and extend the art practice outside of the classroom, right? And make sure that the students also benefit from the uh, lessons. There are more life, life lessons that art uh, in performing and visual art teach teach us all, you know, more than what is on paper, more than what is your sculpting. Of course, in that, we focus on the element and the principle of art, the technique and the media. But then there is so much that we learn through the process. We learn commitment, endurance, perseverance, right? Keep an open mind. My, how many things that we learn every time that we do an art project? Many. Almost there, my friends. If you want to smooth down some corner, reshape a little bit of petal, this is when you get to do it. These are all done, so we need this last tree. A double check on everything that we have done and I think that we finally finished. Whoa, shake your hands and I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay friends, we finally did it. Thank you so much for committing to this practice and I hope that you really enjoy this design and you feel that you learned so much through the practice and through the process, which is always more important than the final product. However, our final product is pretty, pretty, pretty. Here it is. I couldn't be happier. And uh, I'm going to see you all very soon for another practice. Please consider subscribing and sharing my video and my tutorials. And there are many new, you know, new updates that are coming up, such as different levels of memberships and uh, community posts. So uh, stay tuned for more. Ciao a tutti.